in motherland Kenya over the last few days the first days of this year 2024 crazy crazy things have been happening in the country but in the last few hours something off the charts has happened <laughs> wah, 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 wah. it is off the charts because if you review official government statements, utterances by William Samoy Ruto, who is supposed to be president of Kenya, it is off the charts. But before I tell you what it is, allow me to tell you a joke that is kind of similar. Okay? And I also firmly believe this joke will bring a lot of clarity so that we understand the real issues here. Why this should really bother every single Kenyan, either within the Republic or outside. This development should really, really bother us. So here goes the joke. There is this school where there was a mango tree. And the students in that school really used to get tortured because during the mango season they would see ripe mangoes ready to be picked and they were hungry because food in school is never enough but there was absolutely nothing they could do because that mango tree was strictly out of bounds no student in that school was allowed to touch any mango in that tree and so one day inevitably there was this student Akweza Kuvumilia it was too much so they climbed up the mango tree and they reached out for the nice juicy mango and plucked it out and were in the process of starting to enjoy the nice juicy mango when they heard a voice from the ground. What are you doing up that tree, boy? It was the headmaster himself. What? His blood ran cold up that tree. But fortunately, his brain was still working and working very fast. I asked you, what are you doing up that tree? The master repeated. The terrified student gave a response that had the master laughing and he had never laughed. And in fact he escaped punishment because this response of his was classic. Sir, I was just about to come to your office to report but then I thought it is better that I return this mango. Somebody plucked it out of the tree. And I was just returning it to the tree, and then I come and report in your office. Sir, I was returning the mango to the tree. <laughs> the headmaster, who was already flexing his muscles, going into caning mode, broke out and laughed and laughed and laughed. And then told the student, go back to class with your mango. Folks, what has happened is the G to G deal, the government to government deal, has been exposed for the whole world to see. You remember the UDA narrative? We'll be buying petrol in Kenya shillings. <laughs> And please don't forget what season we are in. Because ordinarily, meetings between the Kenya government and the IMF, we are never told everything. In fact, in most instances, the most sensitive information is kept away from the public. But in this instance, yeah, and this is a mystery that will have to be solved one day, the G2G deal has been exposed from this IMF government meeting. You remember what Ruto told Raila when Raila blew the whistle on this G2G deal? 
he told Raila that Raila was on a wild goose chase. Hold on a minute. Same phrase that was used by the Supreme Court. Who wrote that Supreme Court judgment? <laughs> Who wrote it? Because there's some consistency in the use of... Anyway, that's a story for another day. It has leaked out. The government saying that the G2G deal, instead of helping Kenya, is damaging the country. It has failed to hold the Kenya shilling steady. Now, there are a lot of implications there, which I will go into with minimal kizungu, yeah, so that we all understand. And then most of all, we understand what this means politically for one William Samuel Ruto. Because things can never be the same again. Never ever. Please mark my words. But before I go into that, I just thought you'd be super interested in the very latest, yeah, which are the post-mortem results from government pathologist Dr. Johansen Oduor yeah, on the remains of one Rita Waini. Remember the Roisambu Airbnb saga? The brutal, yeah, very gory saga of Roisambu. Indeed, my immediate previous video is on that subject. And I have to say that this post-mortem confirms 1,000% the contents of my previous video. Apart from giving us some brand new mind-blowing information on this saga that has shaken the country called Kenya. You know Dr. Oduro was asked by journalists whether this is common whether he had ever seen a case like this before. This was his response. This is the first time, I'm quoting. Yeah. This is the first time. In my entire forensic life, I've never come across such incidences. Never ever. What? Please remember, that a government pathologist sees a lot of things. Anaonanga <laughs> mambo. The things he sees, hey, there are many. And this man has been on the job for quite a number of years. And there are a lot of crazy people running around in Kenya. There are a lot of crazy things that happen. But this man now tells us in his entire forensic life, in his entire career, he has never seen anything like this. Remember, in my previous video I said, people should not compare Rita's case to the other Airbnb. Manenos, this one is different. Very, very different. That miguzote mbili zilikatwa zikatolewa. Okay, but then what was used on the skin was a sharp object, maybe a knife. Lakini kwa mifupa, walitumia haksu. Meaning, this is somebody who knew exactly what they were doing. Either a medical professional or somebody who has done this many, many times before. Okay, and in my opinion, most probably the latter. Something else he said, Rita lost a significant amount of blood. Read between the lines. Something else, the fingernails, some fingernails were clipped. Now, why would somebody do this? To get rid of their DNA remains. Because assuming Rita struggled, maybe scratched here and there, that would leave DNA traces of the person who did this. This very horrible thing. Now I need to say something. In my opinion, the nationals of a certain other African country, not Kenyans, yeah, 
but our brothers in Africa are oversensitive. You know there was a time I was living in a foreign country and Kenyans were misbehaving in that country. Walikuwa mepeleka tabia zao mpaya to that country. Walikuwa natuwa ibisa. <laughs> and all the time I was coming across people telling me, you Kenyans, you know you do this and this and this. And I was not as defensive at that time as these brothers of ours are defensive now. Because the truth is, every country has its bad people. Yes, I was a Kenyan in that country where Kenyans were doing bad things, but I was not doing those bad things. And I was also not defending my fellow Kenyans who were doing bad things. It's as simple as that. Now, a lot of you have mentioned the nationals of another African country in the comments area of my previous video. I didn't do it in my video. And in my opinion, it is a bit premature. Yeah. Because investigations are not complete. Nobody has been charged. Many people are being held. But nobody has been charged. Yet. So you cannot jump into conclusions. By identifying the nationality of the possible perpetrator of this crime. Yes, it is true. In my opinion, the evidence is conclusive. He ilikuwa ritual manenos. Yeah. However, you cannot blame an entire nation. Okay? So please, guys, take it easy. Now, on to the main topic of my show today, which is the story of this Kenyan president who was caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Okay? But very quickly before that, please allow me to introduce to you our sponsors for today's show. Yeah? And these guys are very, very familiar to all of us. <laughs> oh, yes. It is the Kumekucha Chris channel sponsorship segment. Now, in case you're interested in sponsoring one of our videos, it's very easy. You can see details on your screens right now. And we even have an opportunity now yeah, for those with budgetary constraints to take up the offer of being a co-sponsor. A co-sponsor means... That you're sponsoring a video with somebody else. You don't appear alone. You're not acknowledged alone. Yeah, and only for $61 you can be able to do this. We reach a very unique audience. Yeah, which many of you have already taken advantage of. You can see all the details on your screens right now. Now, the controversial G2G deal was signed according to the government, on March 10th, 2023. Now, on the date was signed, the Kenyan shilling was exchanging to the dollar at 128 shillings, 0.32 cents. Today, it is exchanging at over 160 Kenya shillings to a single US dollar. Now, if you look carefully at the graph on your screens right now, you will notice that before this date, the Kenya shilling was still losing to the US dollar. However, the curve was pointed at, at an angle of around 45 degrees or less. But you will notice shortly after this date, it spiked. It started pointing more or less skywards in terms of losing to the US dollar. Is there a connection? You see, it is highly likely that some of the people who are importing fuel into the country were using their dollar resources outside the country to do so. They regularly have to get their dollars into the economy, into the country. But after this deal was signed, some of the big boys importing fuel relocated from Kenya and went to other countries, Tanzania, Ethiopia, etc., etc. In my opinion, this was one of the many reasons why the Kenyan shilling started a free fall. It started falling bilampango. Bottom line, the so-called G2G deal was a very, 
very bad idea. Instead of helping Kenya, it damaged us badly. Which is a complete contradiction of what the KK government has been telling us, including Ruto himself. Oh, this deal is so good. Other African countries want to copy it. All lies. You know, a man can tell a lie many times. And some of the lies he tells, people will not remember. They will not really stick on people's minds. But this G2G lie, hey, super glue, it is going to stick on the minds of all analysts all over the country who are looking at Kenya. In my opinion, it is going to make Kenya a laughing stock. Indeed, already Kenya is a laughing stock. People are laughing at us. All this is a firm confirmation that the Ruta administration has no idea what they're doing, has no idea on how to run a government. Because what happened in this case of the G2G, somebody decided to gamble with the lives of Kenyans. They decided to play pata potea with Kenyans and their lives. Because this was a so-called brilliant idea to take pressure off the Kenyan shilling. And theoretically it may have made some sense. However, there were many problems. For starters, this deal would never have happened if people had followed the constitution. Because for somebody to have implemented something like this, it would have needed to go to parliament. It would have been more than necessary for the Kenyan public to be told about it and explained and familiarized with. Did that happen? To this day, the G2G deal is still shrouded in mystery. Yet it involves Kenyan taxpayer money. Not people's personal money. Public funds. In my opinion, it is impossible to come back from this one politically. Impossible. And there's more. It is clear that the G2G deal is harmful to the Kenyan economy. Why do I say this? Picture the following situation. You're the Kenyan government and you're talking to the IMF. And you're giving them a commitment to get out of the G2G deal by December 2024. Okay? Why would you need to give them a commitment? Why? Unless it is linked to the problems Kenya is facing right now that has taken it back to the IMF to borrow more money. There is no other reason why it should be mentioned. Mpaka its date of termination, December 2024, the end of this year. Actually, it is rather obvious that this thing has really damaged us this G2G deal. Very simply put, the shilling was exchanging to the US dollar at 128 when this deal was signed. Today, it is at 160, which means we are paying more today for the fuel in the deal that was signed in early 2023. And going forward, barring a miracle or something very unexpected happening, will continue to pay more and more for the same fuel. Because the shilling continues on its free fall in exchanging to the dollar, it continues to slide, get weaker and weaker every day. Meaning that we need more and more Kenya shillings to buy the same value or the same volume of fuel as the days go by because the shilling is weakening. We need more Kenya shillings to buy the same amount of dollars because the G2G deal fixed the dollar amount for all the fuel we're purchasing through this deal which is all the fuel being consumed in Kenya today and now we have a very neat explanation as to why petrol prices reduced by five shillings yeah, on the 14th of this month it was to try and fool Kenyans, as many of them as possible, that there's nothing wrong with the G2G deal. That it's actually working. And that is why fuel prices are going down. <laughs> yeah? 
What trickery is this? Eh! You may think extreme. And now it is a fun activity for Zmeo supporters to go back to all those Ruto statements. To all those statements by Ruto psychophants on how good the G2G deal is. It is fun. It's comedy. Although at our own expense. Because we are all suffering. And suffering very badly. If there was a trust deficit before, a problem trusting this government, this regime, I don't know what English word to use to describe the situation now. Because it is now out in the open that we were lied to. This thing has never worked. In fact, this thing has damaged us. This so-called government-to-government deal yeah, that many believe was not even a government to government deal. Ewe mwenyezi mungu. Tafadhali tusaidie. Sizi wa Kenya. Until next time. This is Chris Kumekucha.